Take your Bibles to turn to Proverbs chapter 4. Any message that should ever be preached in a church should automatically start with the pastor say, take your Bibles and turn to you because if not, it's just opinion. Opinion doesn't matter. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23 Jude, we read how that you all must earnestly contend for the faith. And I said, and we kind of built up our, 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 our boxing ring and, and, and put our fighter over here and acknowledge. And, and I said, I guess when it comes to the Christian faith and the Christian walk, I'm tired of seeing the, the, the devil walk in and, and go and knock out another one, knock out another one. There's, there's another marriage over here knocked out. There's another young person that said that they were going to serve God with all their heart and went forward at teen camp and said, Lord, I'm giving you my life and knocked out. I get tired of that. And then we, we, we just got in and saying, well, because the mindset is get in, fight hard, give it all you got, fight, 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 fight. And God says, wait a minute, stop. What about your heart? Do you have a relationship with me? Have you started in the heart? Have you acknowledged that it's not outward, it begins inward? Purify your heart. Draw close to God. Last week we got into the whole thing of what Proverbs said. Proverbs said that the word of God is truth. We're going we're gonna to build on this the last week's message today. The word of God is truth. So you sit down the fighter, you look at him, and God is our coach, is our guide, is our strength in everything, says, listen... This has everything you need. You either accept it, hear it, is what the Bible says, attain it, retain it, bring it into your life. The Bible talked about don't forsake it because that's what a lot of us do. We sit in church and we're like, amen, brother, that's good, that's good, honey, we should do that. Then you get into that fight with your wife and boo, (laughs) man, you leave it all behind. The words start flying, anger starts flying. Man, that young person sitting in youth group in teen camp, I love teen camp. You know, a lot of emotional decisions are made at teen camp. You know, you just sit there and say, Lord, I, I want to give you my life. Lord, I want to be better. I want to be different. Is, is it true when you're out on that date? You're, going, you're invited to that concert that you shouldn't be at. When you're invited to do this and that, you know you shouldn't be. So the Bible says, forsake it not. So God says, hide God's word in your heart. And you know what happens from truth comes wisdom. Wisdom is God saying hey, connects your head to your heart to say, don't do that. It's saying that that when the Bible says this is right and wrong, it connects to our hearts, and you turn around and say, you know what, I shouldn't be going out with that girl. She she doesn't walk with God. She doesn't live the way that the Bible says. The Bible says for to not be yoked together with unbelievers, and and you turn around and say, no, that's harsh. No, that's Bible. It's Bible. So if we just get to the point where we'd understand what's right and wrong, it would save a, a whole lot of heartache from us. And then we talked about wisdom brings victory. The Bible talked over and over again, and we read like seven, eight verses how, I will bless you, I will honor you, you will prosper. When that young fighter gets in there and he's living right and he's doing what's right, God said, you know what? I'll open the door for you to marry the right girl. I'll open the door for you to marry the right guy. I'll give you the right job. I'll give you the right church. I'll give you the right job. God said, I will prosper you when you take me into the battle. When you stand with me, how the Bible says, I'll give, you, I'll give you discernment and understanding. We brought the two guys up here. God said, every day with everything you do, you're not alone. I will give you discernment and understanding to sit there and go, I'm not doing that. No, that's not right. It's not you. It's God working in you. So we talked about the heart of a fighter, the strength of a fighter. But boy, we got into the next verse got into the second char- chapter, uh, uh, second half of chapter 4, and he got into the warning to the fighter. The warning to the fighter. And this is where we have to listen up. Solomon doesn't stop, but he continues to warn the fighter and let them know, just because you start off well, and just because you get on the right path, just because you know these things doesn't mean it's going to end right. Okay, let's say you do everything we talked about. You stand with God and you walk out there and you fight with God and you fight with wisdom. You fight with truth and you fight with that. Do you think the devil's just going to be like, man, he means business. I'm just going to leave him alone. No. Actually, I'm telling you, you put a big fat target on your heart. And the devil turns around and says, you know what? I've got plenty of help on my side. And the Bible has, he's got temptation over here sitting in this corner he, he's got lust over in this corner. He says, man, get ready. You're going to go in next. Over in this corner, he, he's, got, he's got greed in this corner. 
He says, dude, you're not a, you think you've got me? I, I will send so many people in there to knock you out. Dude, don't just think because you've got it together and you're coming to church and you're soaking it up and your kids are sitting in that pew to think that the battle is all taken care of because I tell you, he still has plan B, I promise you. He's not done. So after he says all these things, he begins to warn, warn the fighter to let him know what's coming up behind, behind you. I used David as my illustration when we first got into this and how he had everything. He was winning, he was victorious, and then he fell. You know why? Because the Bible gives us this principle here. You've got to understand that the devil is after our hearts. And the word of God is what, what gets to our hearts and opens our eyes. Here in this passage, well, I'm, we're getting into Proverbs here in, the morning, in a minute. Here you've got Jesus talking to the Pharisees, and I thought about this, talking about the heart. And uh, he called them out on something. He said, you generation of vipers. He said, man, you guys are great with pleasing me with your lips, but your heart is so far from me. And, and he said this because he saw what was coming out of their life. And he knew what was coming out of their life was a reflection of whatever was in their hearts. Let me tell you guys, whatever we feed our brains is what we fill our hearts. And the Bible says, and Jesus said this over and over again, Matthew chapter 15, verse 18, just listen. But those things which proceed out of the mouth cometh from the heart. They defile a man. Jesus, Jesus said, you, you need to stop blaming everybody for everything and understand that the reason that that stuff's coming out of your mouth is because it's in your heart. I'm setting up the message because I want you to understand why this is so important to guard the heart. Well, let me say, to, with all due respect to anybody here, and I've, nobody's come to me before the service, and you've got to understand, I just want to, I want to be a pastor that's willing to take this and give it to you right the way it is without you saying that man was judging me or anything else. Can I just tell you, our world is in a mess. Amen. It's in a mess. It is absolutely falling apart. I told my Sunday school class this morning, we were doing some studies, and I told them, I said, you know what bothers me about every sitcom and TV show that comes out? Every sitcom, or most of them, is about a, dis a dysfunctional family. It, 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 is about, it is about people that can't get along. It's about kids that hate their parents. It's about a mom and dad that have been broken. It's about two men that live in together. It's about a gay man trying to raise a, a child. It's about, it's, it's about everything but a husband and wife standing together, setting rules and setting standards and living for God and doing what's right. Even the concept, if they introduce a family going to church, it's done in a funny, humorous, God-mocking way. They have completely lost the idea. So now we've got a generation of young people that grow up with just thinking that that's just eventually what happens. Every marriage fails. Everyone shacks up. Everyone sleeps around. Everyone does this. Everyone has casual this. Everyone does this. And it's so much in their brain that they don't know what's right and what's wrong. But then the preacher will get up. And because it goes against culture and it goes against what my daughter or my son or what's popular or what's in school or what the other kids are doing and everything... We have been become so consumed with the flesh that we don't want to hear it. Don't upset my children. They don't want to hear about this lifestyle, or this party, or this way of life is wrong. Don't do that. Oh, I, I'm not going back to that church. That pastor just gets up there and blasts everything from his opinion. Do you know what breaks my heart? And I'm going to be honest. So don't sit there and chuckle or whatever. I'm, I'm being flat out honest with you about something. And I, and I know you're going to judge me for this. I feel bad for Miley Cyrus. I do. You can call her every name under the sun. But the truth of the matter is, she's just drug along through this world. She's just a tool in, in some producer's mind. They don't care about her as a girl. They don't care about the outcome. They don't care about where she's headed. They don't care about what will be her lifestyle or her life after they're done with her. We're going to use this girl to make as much money as fast as possible and use to get in her brain and just thinking, I want to be popular. I want to be big. I want to outdo the last girl. I want to be known. I want to be controversial. And they play on her emotions. And let me tell you, when they're done with her, they will drop kick her to the next rehab and leave her there. You can say you're just judging. No, we need, to, we need to open our eyes and say that poor girl needs prayer. 
She needs to be reached out to. She needs somebody to be able to reach into the darkness and saying, hey, you, don't, you can get that hook of the world and media and everything else out of your mouth and know that you're a beautiful young lady that God wants to do something with and God loves you in spite of how popular you are or what you do. But if we don't wake up, if parents don't wake up and say, hey, this is not good. I don't care if it's popular. I don't care if every child is doing it. Look at the destination. Our children are having children. We just sit there and say, it's okay. I'm not knocking anybody. Please, if you're here. All I'm saying is I, I have gotten to the point where God gives me the truth and I've got to stand up and read this and say, hey. He had a way to make it work. And if I don't stand up and start just preaching and saying, this is what works, and this is the way, and this is truth, and this is real life. This is it. And I know that the world doesn't want to hear it. I'm just simply saying that. Because if you're here, I don't want you to sit there going, oh my goodness, he's just bashing. My, my daughter's been through that, and now he's preaching on it. No. Please, every church member, back me up. If I touch on something that somebody's done, I'm not pointing you out. I just have to raise up truth. Because if you've messed up and you've crossed into something, the greatest thing you can do is reach out to the next one and say, hey, don't. It's not worth it. If I could go back, then, 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 then warn them. If I, if I preach about divorce, don't sit there and think that I am like ripping your face off. And I can't go into that church because that preacher is just going to get on me every time. No, just sit there and say, hey, praise God. If I could go back and do it different. And man, you're, maybe you're in that second or third marriage or whatever. I'm saying wherever you're at, just do right from here on out. Give it to God. Paul messed up, messed up, messed up, messed up, messed up. And he finally got to the point and he said, I look for it. He, he said, I can't keep looking back because every time I look back, I get so discouraged, get so beat up thinking, man, well, look at what I did. And God says, man, stop and look forward. I tell every young person that, stop and look forward. Man, just, just look at God and look at what he has for you and understand that he's got a promise for you and he's got a way for you and he's not done with you. It's never done. So in this passage, with everything that he does, he gets into wanting them to understand that, that Solomon walks, in, in a sense, his son is in that battle, and he's fighting, and he's doing this, and his son, his dad walks up and says, hey, come here, come here. For, man, you're doing so good. I'm so proud of you. Man, you... you you're, you're, you're ready to get married, man, or you're, you're married, or you're, you're starting this home, and you got this degree, and you're doing this and that. He goes, but, buddy, come here, come here. I want to tell you something. And he said, I think, I think Solomon just bared his soul in Proverbs 4.23. He said, you know, I told you about how God is awesome. You know, I told you that God's word will just keep you and guide you and prosper you and love you and all that. And he said, but I, I've got to warn you, son. I've got to tell you, will you listen to me? Listen to what he says. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Do you realize everything about you, of where you will end up, the type of marriage you'll have, the type of man or woman you'll be, the type of grandparent you'll end up being, the influence that you're going to have in this world, the type, the, the, the where you're going to end up in your, in your reputation, everything starts way back here in your heart. It starts right here. What you feed your heart, what you put in your heart, what you expose your heart, what you believe, what you love, what you hate, everything is right here. And he said, son, if I could give you some advice... He said, everything that you've learned, I want you to put a guard around your heart. I want you to protect your heart. I want you to put your dukes up around your heart. Because I'm telling you, Satan's going to sit there and try to beat it with greed and lust and everything else. He's going to try to get you, and I'm begging of you, guard your heart. Because he said, out of that, we'll decide, well, I don't see anything wrong with that girl. I don't understand why I can't touch her in that way. I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't, I, and all of a sudden you said you, you're going to end up someplace where you're going, how did I get here? 
And God says it started way back here. When you stop getting your word of God in your heart. I'm going to give you three points. And we'll be done. He says right here, he says, talking about guard your heart, guard your heart, guard your heart. Jump back a little bit. Proverbs 4.14, he said, enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, pass away. You know, he's literally saying, he said, this is a choice, an option. Guys, we can, we can talk about the devil and the, the, how the world and all this other stuff, but really all that is one battle. The biggest battle is right here in our hearts. Hey, you, you guys, you know, teens and these young people and stuff, man, God bless you. I love you. Glad you're here. But I'll tell you, the, the battle's not, it's more than what you're going to face when you get into that party scene or you get into the public school or where you get into those friends that are hanging out at their school. The biggest battle happens when you slam that door and go into your bedroom after mom and dad try to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with you. That's really where the action's taking place to determine where you're going to go in your life. It starts internal. Here, let, let, let's get into it. Here's, here's the thing. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. My son, attend to my words, incline thy ears unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thy ears. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are, what's the word? They are, they are what? Life. I don't, I don't know about you, but I mean, it, when it comes to life, it's, I mean, what's the opposite of life? <laughs> I mean, this isn't a, well, here's some pretty good advice. I'm saying, no, this is do or die. This is live or die. This is everything, son. You know, I, 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 want, I want to yell out to the world and just sit there and tell them, you understand why everything in your life is dying? You want to know why you can be top whatever, 20 this and 20 that, you can break this record and you can have 20 Grammys, you can have gold records on your wall, why you can break the record, the first person that did this or whatever, and still end up in rehab. You know why these people brag and they, they uh, you know, next on ET, they, they spent $25 million on their wedding. Six months later, they're in divorce. It's never, ever going to make it work. $50 million, $100 million, I don't care how much you spend on it, it's not going to make it work. You see, all, all the, this is what brings life to your marriage. This is what brings life to your, to your home. This is what brings, this is everything. Right. You, there's, there's not another way. There's not another direction. There's not another decision. There's nothing. When you sit there and God says, lifts us up and says, this is life. He goes on, he didn't just say, this is life. He turned around and says, this is health. And health to all their flesh. Here's, here's the warnings. This is, this is what Solomon continued to tell this young warrior. Number one, there's instructions to be, implied, to be applied. There's a lot of opinions in this world. Right now we have an entire government shut down because they, they can't decide on anything. We almost do that as Christians. We get in there and go, well, I think this is right. You know what? I don't look at it that way. I never looked at it that way. I don't feel that way. I don't do it. And God says, stop it. Case closed. If we just get to the point where God says, I made up the rules. I know what's going to work. You can debate on marriage. You can debate on dating. You can debate on entertainment. You can debate on raising children. You can debate on, on all these things. But God says, the buck stops here. And he just lays it out. And he says, if you would just get to understand that this is life and health. This is the antidote to everything. If you dare want to reject it, I promise you it's not going to work. The Word of God has the instructions to everything that we need. It's His instructions, His direction, everything. I go back to when Jesus was talking to them, and I already quoted it. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He, he wrapped it up in there. And then, let me tell you, Jesus left us and said, oh, Jesus left us. No, then he turned around and said, I give you the way, the truth, and life. You see, every day when we come into church, 
we all are exposed to it through our Bible reading, through the classes in our, our kids are learning, through, through junior church, through Sunday school and one and everything. <clears throat> We're giving them what's right and wrong. We're going to give you what's going to work and not work. We're going to give you everything and say, this is, this is how it works. <clears throat> it's, un, it's important for us to understand. It's, it's all right here. He said, out of this comes back. And, he said, and so we stand up and say, man, I, I just don't know. Turn it, turn it back one chapter. Okay, we're going we're gonna to tie this in with something else. And so we're sitting there and saying, man, I don't know. I just, it's not how everybody else does marriage anymore. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, I figured... We'll move in for a while, and we'll just kind of see, and, you know, just, and, and just, I don't know. It just doesn't, it's not the way people do it anymore, and I, I want to kind of fit in, and I, I just don't know if that's the best thing. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, and let, me, let me quote it right, 3, 5. It says, son, you need to do something. You need to understand that you can trust in the Lord with all of your heart. I'm going to tell you straight up, son, you can trust in this completely with all of your heart, every bit of you, with no hesitation. If you just understand, you say, wait, wait, wait a minute. I was watching Dr. Oz, and I don't care what Dr. Oz says. Thank you, Nichelle. Back me up, sister. (laughs) And we we get sucked into all these different philosophies of life, and, and God just says, make it very clear. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not on thine own understanding. So you're sitting there and and you're you're saying, you know what, I I know what I should be doing and and, and being involved and you guys can shoot me, kill me, be upset with me, that's okay. But I'm going to tell you right now, premarital sex is not the way to go. There is so many lives being destroyed and so many kids falling apart and teenagers falling apart and singles falling apart and there's so many... I'm dealing with it on this end of over here, sitting with a couple in my office, and they're emotionally distraught, and they've been through it, and she's been with this many guys, and he's been with this many guys, and I don't know if I can trust her and all that. All of that wraps up in this package because God says, no, no. But it, we're, we're not wise, and God says, trust with all of your heart, and lean not on your own understanding, and lean not on your understanding that the world and everything around is going to get you. Lean not on your understanding, but in all thy ways. In, 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 in how you do everything in your life, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. God said, I'll, I'll, I'll make it to where you meet the right girl, and I'll make it to where, where you date the right way, and I'll make it to where you can stand at that altar without regrets, and I'll, I'll make it to where you can go on that honeymoon and enjoy every aspect of the way that God created, and it's not wrong. You can raise kids and stand united and teach them the truth, and you can raise them to do right. You can send them out in the world. God said, on all thy ways, I acknowledge, and I will direct your paths. I've got it. When, when young people are pulling guns on themselves and shooting themselves because they're so depressed because they've been rejected from a boyfriend or girlfriend at 11 years old, something's wrong. When we have young people that are sitting there debating in their hearts when, when they should become sexually active or whether or not I'm gay or not or whether I should be doing this and how far is too far and all these other things, we throw a heap of garbage into our young people's lives because we're not willing to just stand there and say, he knows what's right for you. The only way that anything is ever going to change in this world is when Christians stand up and they trust the Lord with all their hearts. And say, God, it might not be popular, and nobody might ever listen to me, and our church might not ever grow to be a mega church, and we might not ever fill every pew, and they might stand up and walk out to their car and say, that guy is old fogey and old-fashioned and stuck in his ways and everything, and he's narrow-minded or whatever, but I'm just telling you, I'd rather preach the truth and see young people turn out and say, hey, it does work when it's done God's way. I want that. And if we don't get determined to honor God, if we don't just get to the point where you say, God, you're the only thing that matters, and I don't care what people think, then we're going to continue to fall on our faces. And that's just a stinking getting old. It's getting old. And turn around and he 
I said, man, he said, son, there's going to be a lot of junk that goes that way. He said, but seven, verse seven in that, he says, but be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord. Put God in the right perspective in your mind. To understand that he will be your best friend. He will be everything you need, but I'll tell you, he will be your judge. You will reap what you sow. God will not be mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You cannot sit there and do your own thing and say, well, God says that I shouldn't be listening to that. And I, God says I shouldn't go to movies. They sit there and curse God and, and have premarital sex and rip off their clothes in front of each other and everything and then just label it as a big lie of the devil saying it's entertainment. God says, no, 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 no. My word says, set no wicked thing before thine eyes. The Bible says, do not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. That's what God said. And then you turn around and say, well, I didn't say it. It's worse than that because you pay him to do it. I'll tell you what, I, I, I love my wife and I'm not going to. I'm not going to slap her or abuse her anyway. And if some guy came up here and I paid him, said 10 bucks, and I slapped her across the face, you, you guys would think I was an idiot. Here's the thing. When you walk into a movie theater and you say, here's 10 bucks, and they curse God over and over again, and you're paying that guy 10 bucks to slap my God in the face. It's worse. Call it entertainment, but that's not entertainment to me. I wouldn't pay you to spit in my kid's face, and I'm not going to pay you to spit in my God's face either. And you say, well, that's not how people look at it anymore, I know. And that's why America's falling apart. That's why homes are falling apart. That's, that's, that's why churches are falling apart, because we're not getting back to just say, hey, you know what, I'll stand up and say what's right and what's wrong. Man, it grieves us in our hearts, and we don't like it or whatever, but I tell you, what's right is right, what's wrong is wrong. Let me turn around and keep going with this. There are instructions to be implied, but notice he goes, there's a path to be ch chosen. Here's the thing. You know, let me do this. For we, we have a free will. And as the child turns around and says, be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, depart from evil, and trust the Lord with all that heart. We stand up, and here's, I'm just going to tell you the way that it is. I then, the Bible talks about there being paths, and Proverbs is four of it. There's a way, there's a way, there's a path, there's a path. And those terms are there, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. The, the word of God is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. There's a direction. With that, let's, just, let's sum it up in this way. There's a choice. And you see, after I receive you as an adult, if you're 20, 25, 35, 55, 85, wherever you're at, and the Bible says over and over again, it's, it's to flee from fornication or abstain from fleshly lusts or touch not a woman in this way or uh, the marriage is, uh, the bed is undefiled in, in the realms of marriage and everything else that it says and it puts it all there and says this is what's right. Then I'm set there with a choice. I can either do what the Bible says and follow God or I can ignore it and choose my own thing. And so what Solomon is doing here to his son and he's saying here's the thing. You have to make a choice. There is a path to be chosen. You are made of flesh, and your flesh will pull you one way or the other. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Let me explain how this works. Proverbs 16, 25, you don't have to turn there. You can mark it in your Bible or whatever. But there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. What brings life? This is life. There's a way that when you, there's a way that I say, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it my own way. The Bible says you can do that, but the end of it is the ways of death. It leads to destruction. That's the destination of sin. Proverbs 4.14, going back to our main passage. Enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. How do we know what is right and wrong? How can we label what is wicked? We have plenty of people that will sit there and say, brother, that's wicked. I don't care what you have to say. People turn around and throw that out at me. I'm, I think it's humorous how people will talk about what's wicked and what's right and wrong and do big debates about stuff like that, and you leave this out. This has it already figured out. Don't, don't sit there. If you're going to debate, throw in some scripture with it, not your opinion. The Bible has it all worked out, and he turns around and he says, there's a way. This is life. This is right, and he, there's a wicked way. And God turns around and says, there's a path to be taken, and God sets us on that. 
but it's a choice. Every day, you make a choice. I, if I want to go to Alabama to visit my parents, do you know how I get there? One mile at a time. I get on the trip, and I hate the stretch from Columbus to Cincinnati. I don't know what it is about that. It's just boring and plain. It's just that long stretch. I just get there, and I dread that stretch, okay? It's just boring. But I, I have to take it one mile at a time. Next mile, we have 492 miles, 491 miles, 400. But eventually, I'll get there. Guys, can I tell you that our entire lives are made up of one decision at a time? Nobody, nobody gets to that point. And I'm telling you, I could name 10 stories right now of teens and people that I ministered to 13 years ago when I first came here as a youth pastor. And I have literally gone and knocked on the house of a hotel room with her and her husband are sitting there and, and they, they've got nothing and they're living in the corner of this apartment or this, this small in this ghetto part of town. She's saying, we got wrapped up in drugs and, and sit there and the baby's crying over there and they have no job and they have no car and they've abused the family so many times and whatever and just, and, and I, I, I try to do everything that I can to help them but I'm telling you, nobody gets there overnight. Can, can I tell you guys, nobody gets there overnight. It, it starts over here with just... Oh, Dad, I know he doesn't go to church, but I, he's just so sweet. And Dad, no, he's not, he's not a Bible thumper like us. Honey, do you think he's going to have the same standards of staying pure before? Dad, that's so old-fashioned. And Dad, I just, Dad, I, 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 we, we, we were going to this thing, and everybody there was doing this, and I didn't know, and I tried it, and I told him I didn't like it, but just, Dad, I won't do it again. And you say, how does that happen? And the Bible just says that there's, there's a path to be chosen. And every path to be chosen starts with one step. Hey, man, you think that it's not a big deal to dabble in porn. And, and you think it's not a big deal for your teens just to dabble it and, and to sneak off that one time and to do this and to do that. And you think it's not a big deal to get on that chat line and just flirt with that one guy because your husband's not giving you attention. And you think it's not, but to see, the thing is, it's just one step. And we sit there and say, why, how, dear God, does this happen? And the Bible says, because I warned you, you either do it God's way or you take one step at a time in the wrong direction. Proverbs 4.14, enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of them. When, 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 pro, when Hollywood does nothing but producing movies that lift up fornic fornication and adultery and sex and drugs and cursing God, what does the Bible say about that direction or that way? Verse 15, avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. Do you think... Was it just being redundant? Or was he really trying to get it in the heart of this young man saying, hey, don't go there. Don't consider it. It's not worth it. It leads to nothing. It won't make you happy. Just, and the thing is, if we don't get that in our heads, there is choices to be made, and a lot of us are making really bad choices. But we'll still sit on the other end and go, oh, God, why don't you, man, God doesn't care about me at all. I'm in such a mess. And God says, wait, 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 wait. Every day I was trying to get you off this path. Here's the thing. If you don't like the direction you're headed, you'll have to take another direction. But doing more of the same is not going to change anything. If that boyfriend or girlfriend is not healthy for you to take you on the direction that God has for your life, then it's time to find a new boyfriend or girlfriend. If hanging out with those friends is taking you on a direction that is contrary to God's word, it's time to find some new friends. You say, well, I don't want to end up like that. Then God says, then you better change this because this leads to that. There's a choice to be made. Avoid it, pass not by it, abstain from it. I mess up and I end up drinking every time I get around those guys. What do I do? Avoid it, 
pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. And I end up, every time me and my girlfriend say that, that's as far, we're not doing that again. We're, we're, every time we get alone like that, every time I go to his apartment, every time I this, I don't know what to do. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. Guys will sit there and say, I end up sitting on my couch and watching things on my HBO that I shouldn't watch and doing this. What do I do? Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, pass away. I say, man, that's, that's not good, I know. Let me finish with one last thing. The Bible is very clear as it says this. Read Proverbs 4.18. But the path of the just is as a shining light and shineth more and more unto the perfect day. God screams out, even in a service like this, and says, man, that pastor's not trying to beat you up. He's not trying to drag you down. He's not trying to knock you down. I promise you, this applies to all of us. But God screams out to us and says, you know what's right and wrong. You know in your heart. You know this. And he says, it's the shining light in the right direction. Verse 19, the way of the wicked is as darkness. Listen to this. They know not at what they stumble. So it's like they keep falling on their faces and, you know, the tabloid comes up, so-and-so in jail again, so-and-so caught DUI driving, so-and-so this, so-and-so that, so-and-so ends up dead in hotel room, drugs speculated, so-and-so over and over again. They're turning around and says, man, I don't, I don't know, I'm going to try to get my life right, I'm going to do this. And they, the Bible says they don't know why they fall. But he says, but you walk in a path that I've lit up before you so that you can know, you can know, you can know. See, we're without excuse. You see, by us going to church and us having the word of God and you having Christian parents and the heritage and wherever you came from, God makes it very clear to us because he doesn't want us to what? Stumble in the darkness. You know what God is literally saying? I don't want you to end up falling on your face because I've given you the very thing that will light your path. I've given it to you. There is instructions to be implied. There's choices to be made. And there's bounties. Boundaries that need to be set. In Proverbs 4.23, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. That word keep is the same exact word for guard. I know there is a lot of things in my neighborhood that can hurt my kids. People will drive through my neighborhood like they're a NASCAR. It's just, it's just crazy. I, I, I don't, I, it, it just scares me. There's things that go on. You call me a bad parent, but I did something. I have a fence in my backyard. It, it doesn't, I don't, I, it, they, they don't get shocked if they jump over the fence. It's, uh, you know, it's not, nothing crazy like that, but it's just something because I love my kids so much that it's basically, I set a line and say, guys, you're going to be really safe if you stay in this spot right here. And so what I do is I establish boundaries to keep them far. Now, now the street is way over here, but the fence is over here. Because it's not a matter of, hey, kids, I want you to be really good at dodging cars. You know, if they come, jump really high or, or run or scream. You know what I'm saying? It's just that that's not, that's what the world, the game they're playing. Honestly. It's like, oh, I had no idea that I was praying. No, 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 don't play in the street. Get out, oh, I've got HIV, don't play in the street. You're going to get hit, I promise you, eventually. Because be sure your sin will find you out. You reap what you sow. You cannot sow it and not reap it. It's not going to happen that way. So what I do is I take my kids and I just establish some boundaries in their lives. You see, the Bible says guard. It literally means put up some posts in some areas, put up some guidelines in this. If I wanted to make it to the back of the sanctuary right now, this is an awesome thing of putting these, these things here. And I, I put these things in and it's like, well, woo, okay. And I, I can make it back because I've got something to keep me on track. And the thing is, if we don't learn to take God's word and say, you know what? The Bible says, well, here's, here's things that God said to us. And well, it's, the word is true. It bring health to us and it bring safety and it, it sets me on the path of righteousness, and, and God's got great blessings for me at the other end of it. And I'm not going to be wise in my own eyes because I'm thinking that's a shortcut, but God says no, so I'm not going to do that. And I'm going to fear the Lord because I know that when I put him in the right perspective of who he is, it changes my life. 
So you know what, kids, here's the thing. We're not going to watch these kind of movies in our home. He says, but dad, this isn't, no, 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 this is where we're drawing the line right here. If they dare cuss my God, they're done. Uh-uh. Kids, if, if you're going to have friends, I'm going to tell you, I, I, I don't care who hates me, but you're, you're not going to go and be around this or that. And I'm, I'm not laying out, but you guys get the point. He sit there and say, honey, dad, I, I want to go out with this boy. All right, well, here's, here's the rules. And, and dad, I, and, and we, we lay them out. He say, that's unfair. But no, the thing is, if we'd learn to set some boundaries in our life, and they're called standards. See, the Bible tells us to, to be, come out from the world and be separated. We're not like the world. Okay, guys, we're not. Not that we're better. We're not higher and mighty. We're, not, we're that. But the Bible says to, to live under righteousness. And I, I've got a calling in my life to do that. And so if we don't learn to establish some boundaries, I tell you, we're going to end up in the street. And a lot of kids are set and says, well, I trust my son. He'll do the right thing. Well, I, I trust my kids, and I hope they'll do the right things too. But God gave them something that's really, really cool. What was it? Oh, it's called parents. Uh, and, and the thing that I've learned about kids is they don't always know to do the right thing. So God gave them those things called parents. And those parents have a responsibility to guard the hearts of their children. And they don't always like it. My kids don't like getting shots, but I still make them get shots because it's the right thing for them. And so we do certain things to keep them on the right track. If we don't learn just to set back and allow God to put some things in our lives to keep us on track, we're going to get into a mess. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Let me finish with this. Proverbs 4.25, just reading right through our passage. Let thine eyes look right on. Let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the left hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. So they're talking about boundaries. God says, yeah, this is the way it is. God says, you know, that's, that's bad, and that's not good. And that life's, so you turn around, and God says, just, just keep in the middle. But there's still those pillars that will set out there and just say, nope, son, we're not going to do Dad, can we watch? That, that, what's it got in it? No, son, we're not going to do that because I don't, it's not good. And we build them up. So why are you saying all this? I'm saying all this because I'm telling you now, in a world that's falling apart, if we don't wake up and just get into it to what God says, we're going to fall apart. And I know that this is not popular and this isn't this, but I'm telling you, if, if, if we don't do something different in our lives to just say, all right, God, this way isn't working in the world. So, God, I'm just going to lift you up and follow you, Lord, in all that you say. I, I, I will take you up as your word. Lord, I'm going to trust in you with all my heart. Lord, I'm going to not lean on my own understanding, but in all my ways, I'm going to acknowledge you. But, Lord, my prayer is that you'll direct my paths.